Hello, I welcome to UPSC prelims Chaturya series of Shantalakshmi IAS Academy where we will discuss the daily prelims MCQs from the Hindu Indian Express and PIB. Let's get started. The first question, consider the following statements with respect to United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. It serves as the United Nations regional hub promoting cooperation among the countries to achieve inclusive and sustainable development. It is the largest United Nations body serving the Asia-Pacific region. India is one of its founding members. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, all three, none of the above. This was in news recently according to a new report by the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, at the current pace of growth, the region will not attain the 17 Sustainable Development Goals until 2062 or will be 32 years behind schedule. About this, it is the most inclusive intergovernmental platform in the Asia-Pacific region. It was established in 1947. The main aim of this to promote economic development in the Asia and Pacific region by fostering cooperation between its members and associated members. The commission promotes cooperation among the 53 member states and 9 associated members in pursuit of solution to sustainable development challenges. It is one of the five regional commissions of the United Nations. It carries out work in the areas like macroeconomic policy, poverty reduction, and the financing for development, trade, investment, and innovation, transport, environment, and development, information and communication technology, and disaster risk reduction, and social development, etc. Headquarters, Bangkok, Thailand. So the answer is all three. Moving to the next question. With reference to the Resina Dialogue, consider the following statement. The Resina Dialogue is organized by the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Observer Research Foundation. The theme of the 2024 edition is Chaturanga, Conflict, Cooperate and Create. It is held annually at New Delhi. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, all three, none of the above. Recently, the 9th edition of the Regina Dialogue will be held from February 21st to 23rd in New Delhi. About this, it is an annual conference on geopolitics and geoeconomics, which, which aims to address the most challenging issue faced by the world. It is held annually since 2016 in New Delhi. The conference is attended by people from political, business, media, and civil society backgrounds. The dialogue is structured as a multi-stakeholder, cross-sectoral discussion involving needs of the states, cabinet ministers, and local government officials who are joined by thought leaders from the private sector, media, and academia. It is organized by the Observer Research Foundation in partnership with the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India. The theme of the 2024 edition is Chaturanga, Conflict, Contest, Cooperate, Create. During three-day conference, the participants will engage with each other over six thematic pillars. These include Tech Frontiers, Regulations and Realities, Peace with the Planet, Invest and Innovate, War and Peace, Armories and Asymmetries, Decolonizing Multilateralism, Institutions and Inclusion, The Post-2030 Agenda, People and Progress, Defending Democracy, Society and Sovereignty. So the answer is only two because the Regina Dialogue is organized by the Ministry of External Affairs. Affairs and the Observer Research Foundation, not Ministry of Home Affairs. Moving to the next question. Recently, the organization has launched the Global Initiative on Digital Health. Option A, UNICEF. Option B, European Union. 
ऑप्शन सी यूनाइटेड नेशन ऑप्शन डी वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन Recently, achieving one of the three priority areas agreed upon during India's G20 presidency in 2023, the World Health Organization launched the Global Initiative on Digital Health virtually. The initiative aims to democratize digital health technologies, featuring components such as country needs tracker and transformation toolbox. Union Health Minister Mandavia highlighted its role in creating an institutional framework for digital health, while Bhakshi emphasized India's digital response during the pandemic. WHO Director General Dr. Tedros emphasized the GADHS support in addressing the health system fragmentation and overlap, promoting global digital health standards. So the answer is the World Health Organization. Moving to the next question. Consider the following statements about Rhodamine B. It is a water-soluble chemical compound. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has banned its usage in food products. Which of the statements given above is not correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one or two. Tamil Nadu banned the sale and production of cotton candy or candy plus due to the presence of rhodamine B. Rhodamine B is a chemical commonly used for dyeing in the textiles, paper, leather and paints industry as a coloring agent that helps in attaining the red and pink spectrum. Although in powered form, the chemical is green in color. Upon being added to water, it turns into pink. It is a water-soluble chemical generally used in incense and matchsticks. Even if consumed in small quantities, the chemical is highly toxic and carcinogenic. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has banned its usage in the food products. So the answer is neither one or two because both the statements given above are correct. Moving to the next question. Consider the following statements regarding the IBSA fund. The fund is managed by the UN Office for South South Cooperation. The IBSA countries, India, Brazil, and South America. The purpose of the fund the purpose of the fund is to identify replicable and scalable projects that can be disseminated to developing countries on demand-driven basis. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, only three, none of the above. Recently, India has contributed USD 1 million to a fund established in India, Brazil and South Africa. About this one, it was established in 2004 and became operational in 2006. The IBSA countries, India, Brazil and South Africa each contribute $1 million annually to the fund in a spirit of partnership and support for southern led demand-driven transformational projects in developing countries. The purpose of the fund is to identify replicable and scalable projects that can be disseminated to developing countries on a demand-driven basis. IBSA fund supported projects help partner countries in the global south to achieve their national priorities as well as all other international upgraded development goals. Objectives It includes promoting food security and addressing the HIV AIDS to extending access to safe drinking water all to contribute to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. The IBSA fund has allocated USD 50.6 million to date, supporting 45 projects across the 37 countries of the Global South. The UN Office for South South Cooperation serves as the fund manager and secretariat of the IBSA fund. So the answer is only to be copied. The IBSA countries India, Brazil and South Africa, not South America. Thank you. This is the today session.